Somebody that is expecting this morning shout a louder amen. My God will visit you today. Indeed, this enough is enough banquet service will answer in your life. I'm not hearing a louder amen. As the Lord visit me today, remember me. Lord, let every thing that is not of you come to an end in my life today. Let every sickness come to an end. Lord, let the verdict of enough is enough. Lord, be be visible in my life today. Lift up your voice. Let that signal that follows you. As you decree enough is enough today, it shall be over. Anda la kato shakiba, anda kato shiba, alando kado bo shande liya babaliaba, la kato sheketo bali shuliya babala, la kata is somebody praying. Omba, omba li balaba, la kato shelaba. In this last Sunday of the fourth month of the year, God is here this morning to meet you at the point of your name. The Bible says, Surely there is an end. There is an end to every affliction of life. There is an end to every sickness and disease. Surely there is an end. And thy expectation shall not be cut off. God is putting an end every sickness, every family. He put it an end every form of delay, every form of stagnation. He's putting an end to everything that mock your glorious destiny. Surely there is an end. Oh, the Bible says, what do you imagine of the Lord? He will make an utter end. God is making an utter end today. God is making an utter end today to everything that mock your glorious destiny. Everything Jesus died for that is not in your life shall be delivered to you today. What do you imagine of the Lord? He will make another end. Lift up your voice. What do you want God to end in your life? It is enough. It is enough service. What do you want God to end in your life? Oh, Makatu Shalabha. In Jesus' glorious name. Somebody shout a louder amen. Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 37 to 34. Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 37 to 34. The Bible says, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel, and the children of Judah were oppressed together. And all that took them captive, held them fast. Na wote waliochukua mateka umewashika sana. And they refused to let them go. Wanakata kuwacha. And they have a demon is strong. Kumbozu wao ni hodari. Anything that refused to let you go. Chochote ambacho kimekata kuwacha. Know that your demon is strong. Ujue kwa mba mkumbozu wako ni hodari. The Lord of hosts is his name. Wana majeshi ndiyo jina laki. He shall surely plead their cause. Yehe atawatetea kwa bibi. God will surely plead your cause today. Mungu atakutetea wewe leo. And he will give the verse to the land. Na atakupa atakustawesha katika. And disquiet the inhabitants of Babylon. Na kuwasumbua waka wa babi. Those that held them bound. I don't know that thing that refused to let you go. I don't know that thing that refused you to get what belongs to you. The Bible says your redeemer is one. And he shall plead thy cost to me. I know he has been a louder amen. What does he mean? He will fight for you today. Remember in Psalm 35 verse 1. The psalmist prayed. He said, plead my cause, O Lord. The Bible says he shall plead your cause today. And that is, he said, plead my cause, O Lord. With them that strive with me. Fight against them that fight against me. That is what that scripture means. When he said, God will plead your cause. He means that God will fight for you today. And he is putting an end to that affliction in your life. I'm not hearing a faithful amen. I'm not hearing a faithful amen. So shall it be. Just get ready. Anything you say enough is enough shall be over today. Somebody shout a louder amen. So shall it be. When do sound to Jesus. Lord we worship you. Glorious.
was gone. You were Thank you for all you have done since the year began. Especially what you have done this month. Perfect all that concerns your people in this service today. Send your word to your people. Lord, use me as your spiritual microphone this morning. To bring your word to your people. And let everyone be blessed by your word. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let every age long disease come to an end in this service today. Let every age long challenge come to an end in this enough is enough service. So shall it be. I have dominion and I take dominion. Congratulations. Help me welcome your neighbor to the left and to the right. Tell your neighbor you are welcome. Praise God. Somebody excited shout a bigger hallelujah. You are welcome 
to his presence. Karibu uweponi mwake. On behalf of the president, Winner Chapel International. Kwa niaba rais wa kanisa la Winner Chapel duniani kote. Our prophet Bishop David Edepo. Na biwe to ask of David Edepo. I welcome you to this great service. Thank enough is enough service. Nina karibisha katika ibada ya kwanza ambayo imepewa jina ya tosha ya tosha. And this service will answer in your life today. Na ibada hii itajibu maishani mwako leo. And no hearing a faithful amen. Faza amen. Remember that our prophetic focus. Tamko letu la kinabii is I am redeemed for the top. Ninasema nimekombolewa ili niwe juu. And our teaching series is understanding Kichwa chetu cha somo kinasema kuelewa the laws sheria understanding the laws kuzifahamu sheria za mafanikio We will look at that before we go to the subject of an office and all Tutaangalia kwanza hizo sheria ndio tuingie kwenye somo la yatosha yatosha Understanding the laws of success Kuzielewa kuzifahamu sheria za mafanikio Hallelujah Hallelujah Today should be part of Leo ni sehemu ya tatu. Last week was Easter we took another direction. Wiki iliyopita ilikuwa Pasaka tulienda mwelekeo mwingine. We have done part 1 part 2 and we are taking Tumeona sehemu ya kwanza ya pili na leo ni sehemu ya tatu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as we conclude today today being the last Sunday. Leo ikiwa ni Jumapili ya mwisho. We want to remind every one of us. Nataka tukumkumbushe kila mmoja wetu. The redemption offers you a heritage of outstanding success. Ukombozi unakupatia wewe urithi wa mafanikio ya soko ya kawaida. Kwa kuokoka kwako. According to Matthew chapter 5 verse 14. Sawa sawa na Mathayo 5:14. You are the light of the world. Wewe ni nuru ya ulimwengu. A city that is set on a hill. Mji uliowekwa juu ya kiango. Ambao hauwezi kufichika. That makes you a pathfinder. Huo unakufanya wewe kuwa mwanzilishi, mwongoza njia. Unakufanya kuwa mwanzilishi. That makes you a front, a front liner. Unakufanya kuwa msali wa mbele. God's ultimate desire for you and I. Kusudi la Mungu kwako na kwangu is to be successful in our endeavors. Ni tufanikiwe katika shughuli zetu zote. We are not born again to suffer failure and defeat. Hatujaokoka ili tushindwe tukwame. We are born again to be astoundingly successful. Tumeokoka ili tufanikiwe kwa namna tofauti. But success is not a mystery. Lakini mafanikio sio siri. It is simply the result. Ni matokeo of consistently applying some laws. Ya kuendelea kuzitendea sheria fulani. Is it is simply the result. Kirahisi tu ni matokeo of consistently Unayapata baada kuendelea kuzitendea kazi. Hiyo neno kuendelea ni muhimu sana. That's why it must be every time. It's not something you do now and so, leave it tomorrow. Sio kitu unachokianza leo afu kesho umekiacha. You must consistently apply some basic laws. Lazima law udumu ukizitendea kazi hizo sheria za msingi. If you must have success that endures. Kama unataka mafanikio ya kudumu. Because when you stop applying the laws. Unapoziacha kuzitendea kazi ya sheria. You must stop seeing Utaacha kuona mafanikio yale unayotamani. These laws are spiritual laws. Hizi sheria ni za kiroho. They are so powerful. Zina nguvu sana. And no one can do can in the school of success no one can do without those laws. Katika shule ya mafanikio huwezi kufanikiwa pasipo hizo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Kaza hallelujah. God wants you to be successful. Mungu anataka wewe ufanikiwe. That's why he delivered this law to us. Ndio maana ametupatia hizi sheria. From the manual of success. Kutoka kwenye kitabu cha mwongozo wa mafanikio. The Bible is not just a book of promise. Biblia sio tu kitabu cha ahadi. But it's a manual for living. Bali ni mwongozo wa maisha. It's a manual for success. Ni mwongozo wa mafanikio. Anyone that want to succeed. Yeyote anayetaka kufanikiwa. Anyone that desire to succeed. Yeyote anayetamani kufanikiwa. Go to this book. Call the Bible. Kitabu kina Biblia. And get the principles or the laws of success. When God called uh, Joshua to leadership position. Mungu to uongozi. lead the children of Israel to the promised land. After the 
death of his prophet Moses. Baada ya kufa kwa nabii wake Musa. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Yeshua moja nane. God delivered him this book. Mungu alimpatia hiki kitabu. He said to him this book of law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Akamwambia kitabu hiki cha Torah kisiondoke kinywani mwako. Thou shall meditate there in day or night. Uyatafakari hayo maneno tena na usiku. And that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written. Ili upate kuangalia kuyatenda sawa sawa na maneno yote aliyoandikwa humo. For then you shall make thy way prosperous. Maana ndipo utakapoifanikisha njia yako. Thou shall have a good success. Kisha ndipo utakapositawi sana. Thou shall have a good success. Utakapositawi sana. Every one of them has his root in applying the laws from this book. Hizo sheria zote zina msingi katika kuzitendea kazi sheria za kitabu hiki. And it is applicable to everybody. Na zinaweza kutendewa kazi na yoyote. No matter the level you are now. Haijalishi uko kiwango gani sasa. I want you to know these few things about success. Nataka ujue hivi vitu vichache kuhusu na mafanikio. The first thing I want you to know is that. Cha kwanza ninachotaka ujue ni kwamba success is not a destination. Mafanikio sio kituo. But it is a journey. Ni safari. It is a journey. Ni safari. It is a journey that we never arrive. Ni safari ambayo haukomi, haufiki After you reach one level. Ukifika kiwango kingine. After you reach one goal. Ukifika le, ukifikishia lengo fulani. Unaenda lengo linalofuata. Na lingine tena. Na lingine tena. It's not a destination. Sio kituo. In Philippians chapter 3 verse uh, the, verse 13 and 14. Wa Filipi 3:13:14 Tume Paulo anasema nakaza mwendo There must be a continuous pressing. Lazima kuwe na kukaza mwendo kwa kuendelea. I press toward the mark of the price calling of God. Nakaza mwendo kuelekea ile mede ya thawabu iliyokuja. You have landed. Never think you have made it. Kama usije kuona kwamba ushafanikiwa umefika. Haijalishi ambayo unavyo sasa maisha. Hujafika bado. The part of a just man. Njia mtu mwenye haki. Over four verse 18. Mithali 4:18. It's like a shining light. Kama nuru ingayo. That shine more. Inayonga zaidi na zaidi na zaidi na zaidi. Inaongezeka kila siku. And it is more and more and more and more and more. Na zaidi na zaidi na zaidi na zaidi na zaidi. You have not arrived. Haujafika bado. It is not a destination, it's a journey. Sio kituo, ni safari. Understand also that success. Elewa pia kwamba mafanikio is not accidental. Sio bahati mbaya au kwa bahati. There's no accident that can be a success. Kwa sababu hakuna ajali ambayo inaweza kuwa ya mafanikio. Understand also. Elewa pia. The success is not sexually transmitted. Mafanikio hayahamishiwi kwa tendo la ndoa. It is not transferable. Hayahamishiwi kwa tendo la ndoa. No matter how your parents are successful. Haijalishi wazazi wako wamefanikiwa vipi. It cannot be transferred to you. Hawezi kukuhamishia. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can only be named the son of the successful man. Unaweza ukakatajwa tu jina mtoto alikuwa mtoto wa fulani alikuwa amefanikiwa sana tajiri sana. That's why you must do ndio maana we mwenyewe lazima ufanye to earn success ili kufanikiwa even though they 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 equipped you with everything in the world ingawa wamekuachia kila kitu duniani it is what you do with it will determine whether you will be successful utafanya nini na hivyo walivyokuachia itaamua kama utafanikiwa au la and thirdly you need to know cha kingine cha kufahamu that success does not come by prophecy without action mafanikio hauyapati kwa unabii pasipo kutendia kazi Success Mafanikio. does not come with prophecy without action. Hayaji kwa unabii pasipo wewe kutendea kazi. Thank God for prophetic declaration. Tunamshukuru Mungu kwa matamshi ya kinabii. But it is not equal to success. Lakini hayamaanishi ndio kufanikiwa kwenyewe. What is required? Usipofanya kinachotakiwa. Hayaji you will never attain in life. Kuna umbali ambao kamwe hautafika maisha. You do what is required. Paka ufanye kile kinachotakiwa. That is shouting amen to prophetic declaration. Kusema amina kwa matamshi ya kinabii. Does not connote to success. Haimaanishi Because every prophetic declaration leave you with a responsibility. Somebody shout hallelujah. Nobody can, can go to the hospital and say employ me. Hakuna mtu anaweza kwenda hospitali akwambia niajirini. I am now a doctor. Kwamba mimi sasa ni daktari. Oh say Bishop Edepo prophesied to me that you Asofo are a doctor. Asofu Edepo ametamka kwamba sasa we ni daktari. I'm now a doctor. Sasa mimi ni daktari. You will keep people. Utatulia watu. It does not you can't become a doctor kwa by profession. Sasa ufufua ufanyiki kuwa daktari kwa sababu kwa unabii. Or even though we pour the whole oil on your head. Hata kama tukikumiminia mafuta yote kichwani. It will not make you a medical doctor. Hiyo haikufanywe kuwa daktari. Until 
mpaka you follow the process of it ukafuata mchakato wa kuwa daktari somebody shout hallelujah Kaza hallelujah the prophecy can help in hands can increase you to do what is required unabii unakusaidia kuongeza neema ya wewe kufanikisha hilo you can go to a local tomorrow monday and say i am not a lawyer Uwezi kwenda kwenye mahakama kesho kasema sasa mimi ni mahakimu mwanasheria. Una vali le gwanda na lile likofia. Sasa mimi ni hakimu. Nasema jana kanisani. They prophesy to me that you are now you are standing lawyer. Wamenitabiria kwamba wewe sasa ni hakimu mkubwa. Does he work that way? Haiendi. And ask you does he work that way? Nakuuliza wewe inafanya kazi hivyo? The person must take responsibility to follow the process of it. Enda shule. That is why I say. Ndio maana nikasema. For success does not come by prophecy without action. Mafanikio hayaje kwa unabii pasipo kutendea kazi. What you do kazi. with the prophetic word matters. Unafanya nini na neno la kinabii ndio kufanya ufanikiwe? Somebody shout hallelujah. Haza hallelujah. What are you doing? The prophetic word of dominion have gone forth since the Neno year began. Bila, utawala, what you are nini? doing because the dominion prophetic word have responsibilities L attached to it. Lile neno la utawala la kinabii lina wajibu ambao umeambatanishwa nao. For you to dominate you must take responsibility and do what is required. Ili utawale lazima uwajibike ufanye inayotakiwa. Every blessing of God have obligations. Kila baraka ya Mungu ina wajibu ina masharti ya kufanya. It is not enough to say I'm going to be successful. Haitoshi kusema nitafanikiwa. Because you are the first prophet of yourself. Kwa sababu wewe mwenyewe ndio nabii wa kwanza wa maisha yako. It's not enough to say my business shall be the great. Haitoshi kusema biashara yangu itakuwa kubwa. That prophecy must come to pass. Lakini kama unataka haya maneno nayo yasema yatimie. You must follow the laws. Lazima ufuate sheria. Somebody shout hallelujah. Haza hallelujah. I'm not hearing a bigger hallelujah. Yes, yeah, hallelujah. I'm not hearing a bigger hallelujah. Yes, yeah, hallelujah. Please, anywhere you go and they tell you, if I pray for you, you will become this and that and that. And if I prophesy to you, you will not become without following the process. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way. Kokote taka kokoenda wakasema niki kutabiria niki kwekia mkono utafanikiwa hayendi hivyo ni uongo. Praise the Lord. Wana sifiwe. Sources. Another thing I want you to know also Kitu about success. Cha mafanikio. Success is not an exclusive privilege of any particular nation, race or gender. Mafanikio sio ni upe, sio upendeleo wa taifa fulani, kabila fulani, nchi fulani, rangi fulani. Don't say because I'm a woman is a man that can be successful. Usiseme kwa sababu mimi ni mwanamke ni wanaume tu ndio wanafanikiwa. Don't say because I, I, I'm from one particular village that's why I'm not Usiseme successful. Usiseme kwa sababu mimi natoka kijiji fulani ndio maana sifanikiwi. Don't say oh, had I been I was born in America I could be successful. Kama sije kudhani labda ningezaliwa Marekani ningefanikiwa. Success is not the exclu exclusive Privilege of any particular race, any particular nation. Sio taifa flani wala rangi flani au kabila au jinsi. Understand that God is no respecter of any person or any nation. Eleo kwa mungu hana upendeleo na mtu yote. In Acts chapter ten verse thirty five and thirty five. Matendo kumi thethi na thethi na tano. After Peter had an encounter with God, baada ya Peter kutana na mungu, he said of a truth. Akasema kwa hakika. Acts chapter ten. Verse 35 and 35. Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Peter akafungua kinyo chaka kasema kwa hakika, najua kwa mba mungu hana upende leo. But he said, in every nation, kwa kila taifa, including Tanzania nation, pamoja na taifa la Tanzania, in every nation, taifa lolote ni, Yule mtu amchaye mungu Akatenda Lazima uwa na kitu natendea kazi Akatenda haki Anakubariwa na hili Kwenye taifa loloti Yehi hana upendero na taifa loloti Somebody shout hallelujah Faza hallelujah And now he has a big hallelujah Hallelujah Please understand that. Fahamu hili tafadhali. Your brand, your background is not the reason your back is on the ground. Umetokea wapi haimaanishi au sio sababu yawe kuwa chini. Your background is not the reason your back is on the ground. Umezaliwa wapi umetokea wapi yawe sio sababu yawe kuwa chini. The reason your back is on the ground is because. Sababu kwa nini uko chini ni. You are not doing what is required. Haufanyi kina chotakiwa. Somebody shout hallelujah. Faza hallelujah. Please change that mentality now. Tafadhali badilisha uo mtazamo. Success is not reserved for the men, both men and women. 
Mafanikio sio kwa ajili ya wanaume tu wote wanawake wanaume wote wanaweza kufanikiwa. Romans chapter 10 verse 12. Warumi 10:12. The Bible said there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. Hakuna tofauti kati ya Myahudi na Myunani. There's no difference between the African and the Europeans. Hakuna tofauti kati ya Mwingereza na Mwafrika. Say for the same Lord. Kwa maana sheria ile ile. For the same Lord over all is rich. Bwana yule yule yuju ya wote. Unto all that call upon him. Kwa wote wa mtao yeye. There is no difference. Hakuna tofauti. The same God. Mungu ni yule yule to all he will in which all Ye no matter where anaweza kuwatajirisha yeyote amwitaye afanyaye anayotakiwa ajalishe unataka haleluya baza haleluya and another thing i want you to know kingine ninachotaka ujue is that kwamba about success kusiana mafanikio that every success story kila hadithi ya mafanikio is also a story of great failure ni pia ni hadithi ya watu walikuwa wameshindwa kwa Every success story is also a story of great failure. Kila hadithi ya mafanikio ni hadithi ya kushindwa kwa namna hiyo. Failure ukuu. is a highway of success. Kushindwa ni namna ya juu ya mafanikio. Everyone that have succeeded today have an experience of one failure or the other. Kila unayemwona amefanikiwa leo ana historia alishawahi kushindwa kwa. Nobody can remember the failures. Lakini hakuna naye kumbuka kule kushindwa kwao. Because kwa. they didn't give up. Kwa sababu hawakukata tamaa. Because you are only a failure when you quit. Unashindwa tu pale unapokata tamaa. You are only a failure when you stop trying. Unashindwa pale unapoacha kujaribu. Nobody will remember that you have failed. Hakuna atakaye kumbuka kwamba ulishindwa. They will only know if you remain on the floor. Watajua hilo kama utapata chini. But if you fail and stand up and continue what you are doing. Lakini ukianguka ukasimama tena ukaendelea. Nobody will ever know that something happened. Hakuna atakaye kuja kukumbuka kwamba ulishawahi anguka. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A man say a man called Tom Watson. Huyo mtu anaitwa Tom hivyo. He is a. He work with IBM. In America, I say, IBM. if you want to succeed, Anasema, double your failure rate. Double your failure rate. Double your failure rate. Ongeza kushindwa kwako. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There was a man who contested for many, 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 many elections. Kuna mtu moja aligombea uchaguzi he, con he contested for senatorial election. Aligombea no, he started from the congress from there senatoria he contested a lot aligombea vyo vingi and he continued na aliendelea kugombea akishindwa anaenda na gombea akishindwa anaenda na gombea tena anagombea tena he went to be a vice president he fell alitaka kuwa and he later contested for president na hakugombea urais baadaye akagombea urais and won akashinda became one of the great american president akawa mmoja wa rais wakubwa sana wa marekani the name is abraham lincoln jina lake anaitwa abraham nobody lincoln. remember nobody can do that he fell hakuna naye kumbuka ule kule alikogombea kashindwa despite the failures they are more than more than six ni alishindwa zaidi ya mara sita they are more than that ni zaidi ya he won the presidential election lakini aliishia kushinda urais nobody could remember hakuna aliye kumbuka kule kushindwa kwa nyumba because he refused to give up kwa sababu alikataa kukata tamaa somebody shout hallelujah Thomas Edison tried 9999 times. Thomas Edison alijaribu mara 999 to to invent this light bulb. Kutengeneza hizi bulbu. He tried and he will fail. Alikuwa anajaribu anashindwa, anajaribu tena. Paka mara 999. And he did it the 10,000 times. The 10,000 times. Akafanya mara 1000 and got it. Akapata. And all those failures were wiped away because of that success. Hakuna liye kumbuka kule liko shindo kwa sababu ya ile ya muisho liyo fanikiwa. Don't give up. Uskate tamaa. Henry Ford, the first car he did, the first car he did, Ford cars, he forgot to put reverse gear. Gari la kwanza alilo tengeneza alisawu kuweka gear ya kunyurugisha nyuma. It looks as if it was a failure in producing Ford cars. Ilionekana kama meshindo kutengeneza ilo gari. But he didn't give up. Lakini akukata tamaa. He continued. Aliendelea. Ford cars are very wonderful cars. Hayo magari leo ni magari mazuri sana. Every story of success is a story of great. Kila hadithi ya mafanikio ni walishindwa huko nyuma. Somebody shout hallelujah. Kaza hallelujah. There are many people who have PhD today who are lecturers who are Kuna watu wana PhD ma professor wa hutubu leo. Some of them firm their form 4 exam. Wengine walishindwa mitihani ya form 4 lakini hakukata tamaa. They write again. Walirudi tena. Some of them went to another standard and they write again. Wakaenda tena wakafanya wakafaulu tena. Somebody shout hallelujah. Kaza hallelujah. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? You are only a failure. 
utakuwa wako shindwa tu if you refuse to try again kama utakataa kujaribu tena and understand also about success na pia elewa kuhusiana mafanikio that success is not a matter of luck Mafanikio sio swala bahati. Is a matter of laws. Ni swala la sheria. Success is not a matter of law. Mafanikio haufanikiwi kwa bahati. Is a matter of law. Ni swala la sheria. Today we look at one law. Leo tunaangalia sheria moja. We have looked at the law of vision. Tumeangalia sheria ya maono. We look at the law of discipline. Tumeangalia sheria ya nidhamu. Last week we we supposed to look at the law of Wiki iliyopita tutakiwa tuangalie roho ya bidii. We couldn't do it because of the Easter season. Lakini natukufanya kwa sababu ya Pasaka. But today we have to move that you have to get and read diligence is one of the one important law of success. Leo tunaendelea mbele kwamba bidii ni moja ya sheria za mafanikio. That is why the Bible say in Proverbs chapter 22 verse 29. Misali 22:29. See thou a man diligent in his business. Ye, wamuona mtu mwenye bidii katika kazi yake. He shall stand before kings. Atakaa mbele ya wakuu. He shall not stand before me men. Hata simama mbele ya watu wadogo. One, one, one translation he will not stand before ordinary people. Abi tafsiri nyingine inasema hata kaa mbele ya watu wa kawaida kwa kawaida. See thou a man diligent today Umemuona in his business. Umemuona mtu mwenye bidii leo. Where you will stand tomorrow? is determined by what you are doing today. Utakuwa wapi kesho inategemea na unafanya nini leo. Today we look at the law of sacrifice. Leo tunaangalia sheria ya dhabihu. The dhabiru. law of sacrifice. Sheria ya dhabihu. Sacrifice is one of the universal law of success. Dhabihu ni moja ya sheria inayojulikana duniani kote. If you sotu. want to succeed in life, unataka kufanikiwa katika maisha. Sacrifice is a must. Dhabihu ni lazima. Because it is impossible to So see without embracing the law of sacrifice. Haiwezekani kufanikiwa pasipo kukumbatia sheria ya dhabihu. But what is sacrifice? Dhabihu ni nini? Let's begin from there. Tuanzie hapo. Maybe as I'm talking now your your mind is talking about oh money sacrificing money or anything. Wenda hapa nilivotaja tayari unawaza ah dhabihu ya kutoa hela. I'm not basing this teaching on sacrifice on that. Mafundisho haya hayalengi kwenye dhabihu ya hela. It's only one aspect of sacrifice. Hiyo ni kiwango kimoja wapo. What is sacrifice? Dhabihu ni nini? Sacrifice is the act. Dhabihu ni lile tendo giving up a thing for something ya kutoa kitu kwa ajili ya kitu fulani we believe is what more ambacho unaamini kwamba kina thamani zaidi sacrifice the art of giving up a thing for something dhabihu maana yake ni kutoa kitu kwa ajili ya kitu fulani something we believe is what what more kitu ambacho tunaamini kwamba kina thamani zaidi au kina faida when this is done hili likishafanyika the reward of sacrifice attend to us thawabu ya dhabihu inatupatia giving up on, on the thing Kuto, for something you know that is much more kutoa yeah. kitu kwa kitu fulani ambacho unadhani kwamba ni cha thamani kina staili zaidi okay if you want to understand sacrifice ukitaka kuelewa dhabihu i can use compass sacrifice with dedication ninaweza kusema na kujitoa hata kufa whereas dedication can be defined as living for a cause Kuto, kujitoa inamaanisha kuishi kwa sababu fulani why sacrifice is dying for a cause wakati dhabihu ni kukifia kile unachokiamini is living for a cause kujitoa ni kuishi kwa ajili ya sababu fulani dying for a cause lakini dhabihu ni kufa kwa ajili ya kitu fulani what is sacrifice dhabihu ni nini sacrifice is surrendering something dhabihu ni kutoa kitu value as a means of gaining something more desirable cha thamani ili kupata kile unachokitamani surrendering something kutoa valuable. kitu cha thamani as a means of gaining something more desirable kama namna ya kupata kile unachokitamani in first king chapter 3 verse 4 to 5 wafalme wa kwanza solomon sacrificed a lot he sacrificed sulemani alitoa dhabihu he gave up something that was so precious alitoa kitu cha thamani zaidi and he got wisdom that those things cannot buy akapata hekima ambayo vile vitu vingeweza kununua he can give himself wisdom Hatajalisha alikuwa na nini asingeweza kujipatia hekima. The Bible says Solomon loved the Lord. Biblia inasema Suleman alimpenda Mungu. He went to Hebrew and sacrifice. Akaenda akatoa dhabihu. And God said because you have done this. Mungu akasema kwa sababu umefanya hili. God gave him an open check. Mungu akampa hundi hiyo. He asked for one, God gave him many. Akaambia aliomba kimoja lakini Mungu alimpa vingi. Giving up so when so, doing something. Ametoa kitu to get something that is more than that kupata kitu ambacho kinazidi thamani ya kile alichotoa what is sacrifice dhabihu ni nini sacrifice is denying 
yourself of certain comfort and pleasure. Thabiu ni kujikana raha na stare fulani kwa ajili ya kitu fulani. For the sources of an assignment. Kwa ajili ya mafanikio au kufanikisha lile jukumu au lengo fulani. Denying yourself of certain comfort. Kujinyima kujikana stare raha fulani. It is the body wants sleep every time. The body wants sleep every time. Mwili unataka kulala wakati wote. But you need to sacrifice sleep. Lakini lazima ujitoe dhabihu. In order to be successful in life. Ili ufanikiwe maishani. The body wants food every time. Mwili unataka chakula kila wakati. But you need to deny yourself some pleasures of food. Lazima ujikane wakati fulani vya kula. In order to get what you want. Ili upate unachokitaka. In order to be successful in life. Ili ufanikiwe maishani. That is why no successful man that is not a man of sacrifice. Hakuna mtu aliyefanikiwa ambaye hajawahi toa dhabihu au sio mtu wa dhabihu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Matthew chapter 16 verse verse 24. Mathayo 16:24. Matthew 16 verse 24. 16:24. The Bible say. Nasema. If any man Jesus said unto them if any man will come after me. Yesu akamwambia mtu yote akitaka kunifuata let him deny his ajikane mwenyewe There are things you must deny yourself Kuna mambo ambayo lazima ujikane We used to say in school if you must pass exam you must burn midnight candles Shule ndio kwa nasema kama unataka kufaulu mtihani lazima uteketeze mishumaa usiku That midnight candle is not burn it does not mean putting candle Hiyo haimaanishi kuwasha mishumaa ya halisia. Kwa maneno mengine, usiku wenzako wa melala wewe amka usome. Wakati wengine wanalala wewe uko macho. Unajinyima baadhi ya vitu. Raha fulani, sare fulani unajinyima. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you are somebody that live a life you are everything things must be convenient for you. Kama wewe ni mtu ambaye kila kitu unataka raha kile unachojisikia. Sahau kufanikiwa. Lazima ujiminye wakati fulani. If you must succeed. Kama unataka kufanikiwa. Somebody shout hallelujah. Haza hallelujah. That is why not everybody succeed because not everybody is ready to sacrifice pleasure. Ndio maana si kila mtu yuko tayari kujitoa dhabihu. You see somebody say I, every day I must eat at this particular time. Mwingine anakuambia kila siku lazima niele saa hii. And he will leave work. Na anaacha kazi. In order to eat and ili akale. Somebody shout hallelujah. Kwanza hallelujah. Is somebody getting what I'm saying today? Unanielewa ninachosema. Somebody shout hallelujah. Kwanza hallelujah. What is sacrifice? Dhabihu ni nini? Sacrifice is going beyond your best. Dhabihu ni kwenda zaidi ya ubora wako ili kutimiliza ile jukumu lilopewa. You know, doing our in of a particular goal is diligence. Kufanya ubora kwenye hiyo jukumu lilopewa ni bidii. Diligence is doing your best. Bidii ni kufanya kilicho bora. Sacrifice is going beyond your best. Lakini dhabihu ni kuzidi kwenye ubora. Going beyond your best. Ni kuzidi kwenye ubora. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's servant have said. Tumisho Mungu anasema. That there is nothing extraordinary. Hakuna kitu chochote kwamba cha kupita kawaida. On his own. Cha kinachotokea tu. There is nothing extraordinary on his own. Hakuna kinachokuwa cha kupita kawaida kinachotokea chenyewe. It is man extraordinary input. Ni ule mchango sio kwa kawaida wa mtu. That makes it so. Ndio unaomletia matokeo yasiyo kwa ya kawaida. Hakuna kitu chochote ambacho sio cha kawaida kinachotokea tu. Ni ule mchango sio kwa kawaida wa yule mtu. Ndio unaomletia matokeo yasiyo kwa ya kawaida. Paza haleluya. Somebody shout haleluya. Paza haleluya. Go beyond your best in that task. Nenda zaidi ya ubora wako kwenye ile jukumu. Go beyond your best. Ongeza zaidi. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are kind, two kinds of sacrifice. Kuna aina mbili ya dhabihu. One is sacrificial giving. Moja ni kutoa kwa dhabihu. This, this may be occasionally demanded. Hii inaweza likahitajika nyakati fulani. You might be prompted by the Holy Spirit. Unaweza ukasukumwa na Roho Mtakatifu. And the second is sacrificial living. Ya pili ni kuishi we mwenyewe kama dhabihu. Na ndicho tunachokilenga leo. Kuishi kama dhabihu. Kuishi maisha ya dhabihu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it is all the times. Na ni wakati wote. If you must test success. Kama unataka kuonja mafanikio. Lazima uishi maisha ya dhabihu. And understand that 
the characteristics of a sacrifice is that it will cause you pain. That is why a lot of people run away from it. Sacrifice will cause you pain. Life is not cheap. It is costly. Sacrifice may inflict scars on you. You don't see a general without a scars in his body. He has dodged one bullet or the other. One challenge or the other. And you keep on moving on. You sacrifice a lot. Understand that sacrifice might inflict your body. Elewa kwamba thabiu inaweza kaumiza hata mwili wako. But he will, this, it will be put crown on your head. Lakini itaweka taji kichwani kwako. That's why if you desire crown. Ndio maana kama unatamani taji. In your hardship as a good soldier. magumu kama mkristo. If you desire the crown. Unataka taji. In your their flesh. Vumilia magumu. It is costly it will afflict it will cause you pain. Ni gharama itakuletea maumivu itakuumiza. Iwe ni kuishi kwa makwa dhabihu au ni kutoa dhabihu. Hebrew chapter 12 verse 1 to 2. Hebrewia 12. You know what Jesus did in the on the cross of Calvary was sacrifice. Yes, what you kifanya msalabani Calvary kwa ni dhabihu. But the Bible say in Hebrew chapter that Jesus. Yes, anasema. Let's read verse 2. Verse 2. He said, looking unto Jesus, the auto and finish of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. He saw the crown waiting for him. He saw the victory awaiting him. He endured the cross. The cross. It was it was painful using nails to nail it. It was painful putting a a a a a toy. That's. It was painful, but Jesus endured. Because he was looking beyond the cross. If you want the crown. Unataka taji in dio today. Vumiri aleo. Praise the Lord. Wana sifuwe. And the Bible say, and he is set. He said after he in dio. Baada ya kuvumiri. After the sacrifice, there is always a blessing. Baada ya the bill sikuzote kuna zawadi ya kuzo. Sacrifice pays. The bill inalipa. It does not leave you the same way. Hai kuachi hivi hivi. You will never regret sacrifice when you when you it costs you something. God's servant said there is no star without a scar. And the sky of every star is sacrificed. Look at the example of Moses. Oh, Moses was great. Moses was great. Moses was great. In Exodus 24 verse 18. You could see what he went to, he a lot of sacrifice. Exodus 24 verse 18. Please put it on the screen. Moses went into the place of cloud. Musa kaingia kandani ya lilewi. Haka panda mlima. And Moses was in the man 40 days and 40 nights. Musa akawa huko katika ule mlima. Siku alubaini mchana na usiku. Without eating anything. Pasipo chakula chochote. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. His greatness does not come without sacrifice. Uku hauji bila thabiu. You can go on in Exodus 34 verse 27 to 30. Thilathina ne kutoka. Exodus chapter 34 verse 27 to 30. Ishina saba baka thilathine. Kutoka thilathina ne ishina saba. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write that this was. Buwana kamambia Musa andika manino haya. For after the tenor of this world have I made a covenant with thee and with Israel. And he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. He, he, he neither eat he neither bread nor drink water. Sacrifice. Somebody shout hallelujah. It must cost you something. If, if so said that it not cost you something. Mafanikia siyo kugarimu kitu. We don't endure. Hayata dumu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see people walking. I remember the story of Isaac Newton. Nakubuka hadithi ya Isaac Newton. He will be walking and forgot that he has. He have no eating. Alikuwa nafanya kazi mbaka anasahau kama mekula. One day he came after the wife 
I put food. There was, there was no time to eat. The wife had to clear the table. Wakati fulani mke wake aliandaa chakula na hakula na akaondoa akaja mezani. Say oh I have eaten without knowing. Kambia ah kumbe nishakula bila kujua. He didn't know whether he had eaten. Kweli ni kwamba hakula mke wake aliondoa tu vyombo. What he was pursuing was more important than the food. Kwa sababu alichokuona kitafuta kilikuwa muhimu kuliko chakula. I said where you walk you remember that you have not eaten. You will never remember that you have not eaten anything. Kuna namna unaweza kafanya kazi hukumbuki kama umekula au hujala. People of God the law of sacrifice. Sheria za mafanikio is so important. Ni muhimu sana. It will cost you something. Somebody shout hallelujah. The value of your life comes to the sufferings you went through. There is a story behind the glory. The value of your life Thamani ya maisha yako inakuja kupitia mapito uliyopitia Kuna mwaka fulani mtumishi wa Mungu alifunga karibia mwaka mzima Anasema alipokuwa kikohoa alikuwa anatoa damu Alikuwa anatoa damu Haleluya Kuna mapito ya kuyapita ili utukufu uje It's not a suffering inflicted by the devil. Sio mateso ya shetani ya kukutesa wewe. Somebody shout hallelujah. Haza hallelujah. But how to enhance sacrificial living? Namna gani unaweza kuchochea kuishi maisha ya dhabihu? How do I promote how do I enhance sacrificial living? Ninawezaje kuchochea kuhamasisha? Sacrificial living to be successful. Kama nataka kuishi maisha ya dhabihu ili nifanikiwe. Nawezaje kuchochea hilo? Number one. Moja. Be focused in life. Uwe na mlengo katika maisha. Uwe na mlengo katika maisha. Uwe na lengo la kuishi. If you don't want to end as a good to have a goal. Kama utaki kuishia kama mbuzi lazima uwe na lengo. Maisha hayana mana kama huna malengo. That's why there is no football match that will be entertaining and interesting without a goal post. Ndiyo mana hakuna match inaweza kuchezwa bila magoli. Everybody is aiming at the goal post. Kila mtu analenga lile goli. Because you will only be successful in that football team when you when or the team can only be successful when they score. Timu hiyo itatangazwa ushindi tu pale itakapofunga magoli. Set a goal, have a goal in life before. Wewe na malengo maishani. Somebody shout hallelujah. Bwana asifiwe. Because without a purpose for life, pasipo malengo ya maisha, you will deviate from life. Utahama tutakuwa na pen, na pele kwa ukoko. You believe you will deviate from life without a purpose for life. Utahama kwenye koko tete bila kuona kusudi. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you are not focused, kama huna mlengo, it will be difficult to live a sacrificial life. Itakuwa ni ngumu sana kuishi maisha ya dhabihu. Number two, be be individualistic in life and your calling. Uwe binafsi katika maisha yako na wito wako. The Bible says in Isaiah 51, verse one and two. Isaiah says, "No, verse two says, 'Look unto Abraham.' I call unto Sarah that bear thee. I call him alone. Nalimuita ye peke yake. Be unto me a father. 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 Be To live a sacrificial life, be individualistic. Don't live your life of sentiment. Hallelujah. God's servant said, "Time have gone." Tumisho wa mungu anasema muda umeshaisha. When we say, "Brethren, let us go." Wakusema wapendo atuende. But now he said, "Now is I have gone. Follow me." Sasa hivi ni ni menda ni fuate kama unataka. Because if you wait for people. You will not live a sacrificial life. Number seven. Be disciplined as a lifestyle. Live a life of discipline. It will enhance your sacrificial life. Refuse to be ruled. Refuse to be ruled by things. Kataa kutawaliwa na vitu. Because if you are not disciplined, you will be ruled by things. Kwa sababu kama huna nidhamu, utatawaliwa na vitu. Rather, rule things. Badala yake, we when do we tawale vile? First Corinthians chapter nine verse twenty-five. Wakolinzo kwanza tisa shina tano. He said, "I keep my body under your subjection." Anasema na uzoeza moyo wangu na kutesa. Number four. Ne. Maintain a joyful life. Uwe na maisha ya furaha. Even in the face of inconveniences. Hata katika magumu. 
maintained. The Bible says in Hebrew 12 to where we read Jesus. Despite the suffering, he was Bila joyful. He was even joyful at the cross. He saw the joy that was set before him. Aliona furaha joy overwhelmed parents. Furaha ilizidi kuliko maumivu. That's why sacrifice demands endurance. Ndio maana dhabihu inataka uvumilivu. Uwe na na furaha wakati unaendelea kuvumilia tano. Number 5. Tano. The willing hearted. Uwe na moyo wa uhiari. Let there be a will. Lazima kuwe na nia. They say where there is a will there is a way. Anasema penye nia pana njia. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number 6. Sita. Receive ingressment for sacrificial living. Pokea neema ya kuishi maisha ya dhabihu katika maombi. It is not of him that will it or of him that will it. But it is of God that empowers. Bali ni Mungu ndiye anayewezesha. Roman chapter 9 verse 16. Warumi 9:16. Hebrew chapter 4 verse 12. Hebrewia 4:12. Receive grace on the altar of prayer. Pokea neema katika madhabahu ya maombi. To live a sacrificial life. Kuishi maisha ya dhabihu. It true make you to succeed. Hilo tukufanya ufanikiwe. Somebody shout hallelujah. Haza hallelujah. I'm not here having a bigger hallelujah. Yes, yeah, hallelujah. And finally, mwisho. Maintain your love tie for God. Tunza upendo wako kwa Mungu. Be passionate for God. Uwe na shauku kwa ajili ya Mungu. The, the, the root of sacrificial living is your love for God. Msingi wa kuishi maisha ya dhabihu ni kwa sababu na upendo uliyonao. First King chapter 10 verse 7. Wa fomu ya kwanza 3:3. Bible says Solomon loved the Lord. Sema Sulemani alimpenda Mungu. If you love God there is nothing you cannot sacrifice. Kama unampenda Mungu hakuna kitu ambacho uweze kutoa. Your time, your resources, your Muda, pleasure. Muda mali zako raha yako. Let it be rooted in love. Viwe na msingi be katika upendo. Uwe na shauku kwa ajili ya Mungu. When people don't make sacrifice because the love is not there. Watu wanapokuwa hawatoi dhabihu kwa sababu upendo haupo. Love your calling. Mpende Mungu, penda wito wako. Love your calling. Penda wito wako. Love that assignment God have given to you. Penda ilo jukumu ambalo Mungu amekupatia. If you love that business you will make sacrifice. Kama unaipenda hiyo biashara yako utaitoa. To make that business work. Ili kufanikisha hiyo biashara. If you love that business you will not like that business to die. Kama unaipenda hiyo biashara hautataka ife. If it take fasting for seven days for that business to blow or Hata to Hata kama itakugharimu kufunga fast. siku tano ili hiyo biashara iweze kusita utafunga. Because you love the business. Kwa nini unaipenda biashara? But when you don't love the business You will live on you don't Lakini suffer when you want to die let it Uipendi biashara yako utaishi kivyovyote vyote vile yende It's, siende sawa Somebody shout hallelujah Haza hallelujah Love what God has put in your hand to do now Penda kile ambacho Mungu ameweka mikono mwako kukifanya sasa And make sacrifice to make it go to another level Na utoe dhabihu ili takufanya wewe uende kiwango cha juu zaidi When you love that business Unapoipenda hiyo biashara yako When others are waking up by 12 noon you are waking up by 7 am to go to that business Wakati wengine wanamka saa 6 kwenda kwenye kaza wewe saa 12 ushaamka kwenda kwenye biashara yako Somebody shout hallelujah Kwanza hallelujah How be passionate about it. Uwe na shauku kwa jili. When you are passionate about what you are doing. Uwe ukiwa na shauku kwenye hilo unalolifanya. You can make sacrifice. Unaweza kutoa dhabihu. You can make sacrifice. Unaweza kuishi maisha ya dhabihu. Somebody shout hallelujah. Kwanza hallelujah. And not here having a louder hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. Somebody bless shout a louder here. Olie barikiwa pazza hallelujah. And understand that sacrifice is not a gift is a choice. Elewa kwamba dhabihu sio karama ni uchaguzi. Na ni uchaguzi wa wenye Those who make a choice to live a sacrificial life. Wale wanao We never lose anything in life. Hawatapoteza chochote maisha. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm 126 verse 6. Zaburi 126 verse 6. The Bible verse 5 and 6. Tano sita. The Bible says because sacrifice makes you to weep. Kwa sababu dhabihu inakufanya uvune. Sacrifice is sowing in tears. Dhabihu ni kupanda katika machozo. Na unapopanda kwa machozo utavuna kwa furaha. Ingawa mtu anakwenda zake akilia zichukua pombeku za kupanda. Hakika tarudi kwa keleza furaha. Bringing his shield or his harvest with him. Somebody shout hallelujah. Haza hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Haza hallelujah. And not here we need bigger hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is a new day for you. I say it is a new day for you. I say it is a new day for you. Somebody shout a louder amen. What does enough is enough connote? Let me say something for you. What does it connote? Anytime you enough is enough is a common word in this commission. 
Yatosha, yatosha neno it's a common word in everyday language. When we say it is enough, it's enough. Sema, yatosha, yatosha. What does he really mean? Nini? And, and, and I want you to provoke you to do something Na about it. Ni kushawishi, ufanye kitu. Enough is enough it means the following. Yatosha, yatosha, it means the following. Firstly, Moja. when you want an end to an issue of, of concern. That it, flani, there is an issue of concern. Kuna and when you say enough is enough, what yatosha. you are saying that this issue of concern must come to an end Unacho now. Maanisha, hiki kitu, tena, what enough is enough means? What does it mean? Yatosha. It means that I can no longer tolerate Mbili na maanisha siwezi tena kuvumiliana au kuchukuliana na nacho. I cannot not let this challenge anymore. Siwezi tena kuchukuliana na ichangamoto tena. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can no longer to let this anymore. Siwezi kuchukuliana na kuvumiliana na hii tena imetosha. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. I'm not hearing a louder here, yes, man. Amen. And God is putting an end to that issue of concern in your life. Na Mungu anakomesha hiyo changamoto maishani mwako. In Ezekiel 21 verse 27. Ezekiel 21 verse 27. I will overturn. Mungu anasema nitakipindua. I will overturn. Nitakipindua. And I will overturn. Na nitakipindua. God is turning that situation. Mungu anaipindua hiyo hali. He said I will overturn. Nitakipindua. Overturn. Nitakipindua. And it shall be no more. Nacho hakitakuwa tena. That challenge shall be no more. Hiyo changamoto haitakuwa tena. That sickness shall be no more. Hiyo ugonjo hautakuwepo tena. That yoke shall be no more. Hiyo mira haitakuwepo tena. Somebody that is alive here shout a louder amen. Amen. Yes, amen. God is overturning things today. Mungu anageuza mambo kwa ajili yako. That is what enough is enough is all about. Ndicho tunacho maanisha tunaposema yatosha yatosha. It means this affliction have lasted longer. Ina maanisha hii changamoto imekaa muda wa kutosha. This affliction enough is enough it means you have lasted longer. Hii yatosha yatosha na maana hii changamoto imekaa muda mrefu wa kutosha. And what does it mean? Na maanisha nini? Enough is enough talks about making moves. Yatosha yatosha na maanisha kufanya mtembeo. Making move against the the long standing trouble kufanya mtembeo au kuchukua hatua dhidi ya tatizo lililodumu muda mrefu especially when it becomes unbearable hasa inapokuwa halivumiliki no, tena this must stop crying enough crying cannot stop it kulia hakuwezi kukomesha hayo but make him move lakini ni kuchukua hatua make him move that kuchukua hatua to do today ndicho tulichokuja kufanya hapa leo God servant say what you don't want you don't watch tumesho ya Mungu anasema usichokitaka usikitazame na usichokipinga have the power to be made kina uwezo wa kukaa you make go to say no this thing on bear about it must stop unakuwa ujasiri kusema hiki kitu sikitaki tena yatosha tosha somebody shout hallelujah hallelujah Every challenge of, her, of life have an expiring date. Kila changamoto ya maisha ina muda wa kuisha muda wake. The expiring date of that challenge of your life have passed. Muda wa kuisha hiyo changamoto yako umeshapita. And understand that no devil is permitted. Na elewa kwamba hakuna shetani anayeruhusiwa. No devil is permitted. Hakuna shetani anayeruhusiwa. To afflict you. Kukutesa wewe. And no challenge is permitted. Na hakuna changamoto anayeruhusiwa. To stay with you. Kukaa na wewe. Every challenge come to pass. Kila changamoto inakuja ili ipite. They didn't come to stay. Hazijaja zikae. Somebody shout hallelujah. Haz hallelujah. It come to pass. Inakuja ili ipite. When it is not passing. Inapokuwa haiondoki, haipiti. You should be worried about. Lazima uwe na mashaka hapo. You should wake up from slumber. Lazima uamke toka usingizini. As a child of God. Kama mwana wa Mungu. Every negative thing in your life must come to pass. Kila kitu kibaya maishani mwako lazima kipite, kiondoke. They asked one man one day what what is his greatest verse in the bible Siku moja alimuuliza mtu fulani mstari gani unaopenda sana kwenye Biblia His greatest verse in the bible is Akasema mstari anaopenda sana kwenye Biblia ni It come to pass Itakuwa au it That this challenge will come and pass Kwamba hii changamoto itakuja na kupita Hii ugonjwa utakuja na kupita Not permitted to stay longer Usiku kukaa muda mrefu Somebody shout hallelujah Haz hallelujah Somebody shout hallelujah Haz hallelujah And not hearing a bigger hallelujah Sikia hallelujah Remember in first Peter chapter 5 verse 10 The Bible said the God of all grace Sama Who have called you by his eternal glory that after you have suffered a while kitambo, when a challenge is more than a while it becomes a cause. First Peter chapter 5 verse 10 
Peto wa kwanza After tano you have suffered a while. Baada ya kuteseka kwa kitambo. Anything beyond a why is a cause. Chochote kinachozidi kitambo ni laana. Psalm 30 verse 5 say we pin may in the of a night. Sabuni sasa ni anasema usikilio chaweza kumuskukuta. Us kama kikizidi usiku hakiruhusi. We pin may in the of a night. Kilio chaweza kurumu usiku kucha. The joy coming in the morning. Kini furaha lazima ije asubuhi. Somebody shout hallelujah. Asa hallelujah. And understand that for every work of the devil in your life. Kwa kila kazi ya shetani maishani mwako. There is an end. And God is the one that put an end to it. And not hearing a louder amen. Proverb 23 verse 18 says, There is an end. And thy expectation shall not be cut off. Now in chapter 1 verse 9, What do you imagine of the Lord? He will make an altar end. He will make an altar end. He will make an altar end. Affliction shall not arise of the second time. God is making an altar end today. Somebody shout a louder amen. But what must we do if enough is enough must answer? Kama tunataka ya tosha ya tosha ijibu tufanye nini? There are action points kuna matendo au hatua to put an end to every challenge of life. Za kufanya ili kukomesha kila changamoto katamaisha. There is what to do it is more than saying enough is enough. But having understanding of scriptures and putting it to work. If that sickness is have stayed long in your body and it's not even permitted to stay beyond the night. And you don't want it anymore. You must take responsibility. You must take action. Because until you take action, you will not see the reaction. Until you take action, you will not see results. What must I do? Number one. Know what the word of God says concerning that situation. Know what the word says. Because you can't fight this battle of an office without knowing what the word says. Huwezi kupigana hii vita ya tosha tosha paswa kujua neno na semaje. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Know what the word of God says concerning your situation or your condition. Neno la mungu na semaje kusana hii changamoto na pitia. Proverbs chapter four verse seven. Methali ne tat. You must know what is written. Lazima ujue kiu nini kime andikwa. Proverbs chapter four verse seven. Ne tat to methali. There is what the scripture say about any situation or life. Kwenye kila changamoto na pitia kuna kitu ambacho andikwa na sema. Romans chapter four verse seven, not proverb. Romans chapter four verse seven. Romans chapter 4 verse 7. Warumi ne tatu. If you want to say, what says the scripture? That should be a question. Maandiko ya semaji, hili ndo pasa kuwa swari. This sickness ravaging your body, what says the scripture? Huu ugonjo na utafuna mwili wako, maandiko ya nasemaji. That marital delay, what says the scripture? Huko kucheleweshwa kuoko olewa, maandiko ya nasemaji. That stagnation, what says the scripture? Huko kudumana kukwama, maandiko ya nasemaji. The devil will be afraid of you when you have the scripture as a weapon. Shetani atakuogopa tu palo napokuwa na andiko kama silaha. What says the scripture? Maandiko ya semaji. Sit down and locate what the scripture says concerning that challenge. Kachini tafuta maandiko ya nasemaji kusena yo changamoto. Somebody shout hallelujah. Paza hallelujah. You have a challenge of age long sickness, terminal diseases. Una changamoto ya ugonjo soti mika umu kamdamre. What did the scripture say about it? Tafuta maandiko ya nasemaji. When you apply it, that sickness will come to an end. Somebody shout hallelujah. What am I saying people of God? Know what is written. In order to tackle what is happening. Know what is written. In order to tackle what is happening. The devil came in Matthew chapter 4 reading from verse 1 to 14. To tempt Jesus. And Jesus said it is written. Yes, it, is it is written. It is written. And the devil left him for his sister. If Jesus didn't know what was written, the thing could have come. He could have not been. He could have not defeated the devil. And shetani. he was putting what was written in, in the tournament. That challenge will not come to an end until you know what is written. Somebody shout hallelujah. Number two. Bili. Apply your faith to every revelation from the world. 
Kwa kila ufunuo neno lao pata, tendea kazi imani. Never be moved by your condition, be moved by revelation. Kama usistushu na changamoto na pitia bali, ushtushu na ima na ufunuo. Put your faith in it. Weka imani katika yu changamoto. If you are located in Matthew 8, 17, that Jesus took my infirmities. Kama ni mepata Mathayo nane, na kuamba Yesu alitua udaifuwa. As you have located it in Matthew 8, 17, Nane kumina saba Mathayo kama melipata nani. Apply your faith that Jesus took your infirmity. Weka imani yako kumba Yesu alisha chukua magonjwa yako. When you apply your faith in this scripture. Ukiweka imani katika hili andiko. That sickness will be over in your life. Uogonjo otondoka maisha ni mwako. Somebody shout hallelujah. Kaza hallelujah. It will come to an end. Utakoma uogonjwa. That is what it means. Ndicho kinacho maanisha. Number seven. Tatu. Thing you must do. Know who you are in Christ. Vitu vya kufanya, ijue we ni nani katika Kristo. If that provoke the verdict of an office enough. Hilo, ndio nalo chocheli tamko la etosha atosha. Who you are in Christ. Wewe ni nani katika Kristo. First Peter chapter 2 verse 9 say you are a choosing generation. Nini ni uzao mteule. You are a royal priesthood. Uzao wa kifalme. You are peculiar. Watu wa kipeke. By being born again you are different. Kwa kuwa kwa 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 we ni watofauti. Know who you are. Ujijue we ni nani. In first John chapter 4 verse 4. Waraka kwanza Yohana nini. The Bible Say my little children. If you don't know who you are, my little children, let me tell you. You are of God. Know that you are of God. And you have overcome them. Na mesha ushinda. Kwa sababu nini ni wamungu mesha shinda. Because greater is he that is in you. Maana ni mku ye ya li enda ni enda. Than he that is in the world. Kuriko ye ya li e katika dunia. When you know who you are. Ukisha jijua we ni nani. You will enforce the verdict of an office. Utalazimisha ili tamkola ya tosha tosha. Somebody shout hallelujah. Haza hallelujah. I've told you a story of one of. One of our deaconesses, one of the churches are pastor. Every time, every time, one sickness or the other. At a particular time, he was struck with a sickness. And we have that place, we have a, a teaching hospital. And he went to the teaching hospital to see the doctor. According to her testimony, there were people there were people lining up to see the Kulingana doctor. Na na sema, watu and he said everyone lining up there were women with hijab. Anasema, watu they are from the other religion. And he said something came on her. He said no, I'm yake. not supposed to be with this people. Akasema, I am a child of God. God. This people cannot be struggling to see a doctor and I should also be seen a doctor. Na mimi pia said, doctor. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. And that was how the sickness started. Before she reached home, the sickness disappeared. She realized who he was in Christ. She, who she was in Christ. And that ended that affliction. Know who you are. And also know whose you are. That you are of God. You are not permitted to be afflicted. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Know that Jesus paid the price. You are come by Jesus. You shall suffer. Garama konye icho na chote seka na chote. Know that He took it and nailed it on the cross. You are come by Shaki chukona kikongomele msalabani. Know that you are not born again to suffer again. You are come by how you are come by Jesus. Know that you are not born again to suffer affliction. How you are come by Jesus. You are born again to reign. You are born again to reign. You are born again to reign. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hands hallelujah. And not here in a bigger hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. Number fourteen, you must ne, do. Chane, Engage a cry of mercy and warfare prayers. Omba rehema na maombi ya vita. If you must, put an end Kama to every affliction of life. Kila changamoto ya maisha. Cry for mercy. Omba rehema. Cry for mercy. Omba rehema. That was what blind by Thomas did. In Ndicho Mark chapter ten, verse forty-seven and forty-nine. Albana sab, albana tisa. He cried and said, "Dad." Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. God will never reject a cry of mercy. You will never reject a cry of mercy. And engage in warfare prayers. The language of a north is a north is a warfare prayer. It's not a begging prayer. You are talking to the mountain and say it is enough. I don't want you anymore. This is not your resident. You are not permitted to do anything. And understand until you speak to situations. You will not get solution. Until you speak to situations. You will not get situations. The devil will not let you go without a fight. He is the afflator. He will not allow that 
that affliction to come to an end without a fight. That is why you need a warfare prayer. You know in Revelation chapter 12 verse 7 and 8. Revelation chapter 12 verse 7 and 8. To, to bring him down. The Bible said there was war in heaven. Despite that God was in heaven. But to bring the devil down, there was war. There was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought also with his angels. And prevailed not. Neither was there any place found more in heaven. That great dragon was cast down. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast down into the earth, and his angels were cast down. God is all powerful, God. Have you asked why must he be a fight before you will cast him? Can God speak a word and the devil will disappear? Can God speak a word and the devil will disappear? Michael have to engage the devil in a fight. And the devil fought back. That situation will not come to an end without a fight. Believe me for battle. God is on your side. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. If you are not ready for battle, you want that situation to continue. You must stand your ground and say enough is enough. <laughs> Paul told Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 1, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 18. He said, this, this, this charge I commit unto you, son Timothy, according to the prophecy that have gone ahead of you, that you by then war a good warfare. If you want this prophecy to be fulfilled, if you want enough is enough verdict to be expressed by you, he said, war a good warfare. Many people are not ready for warfare. That's why the problem continues. If you must come to an end, learn to war a good war. The Bible says in the time of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God suffered violence. And only the violent. Only, not everybody. Matthew 11 verse 12. Only the violence. Not every Christian is violent. We are, we are talking about spiritual violence. Who we say no. God servant came back one day and mama said, God was coming and said, it's, it's like I have, I have, it's like I have Miscarriage. No, it cannot happen. Only the violent take it by force. That, that push an end to it. Only the violent take it by force. That situation have overstayed. It, it has overstayed. You must stand to say enough is enough. Let's go to chapter five. I don't want it anymore. With spiritual fervency. With red eye, spiritual red eyes to the devil. Are you ready to do that today? Stand up on your feet. Stand up on your feet. Matthew chapter 5, verse 1. Matthew chapter 5, verse 1. Lift up your voice and thank you. Oh, brekata shulia babalaba. Everybody stand up on your feet. The devil will not let it end until there is a fight. Shetani hata kuachia wende mpaka upigane. Fight against the devil and all his cohorts afflicting your life. No, that barrenness must end. That sickness must end. That marital delay must end. That business stagnation must end. If you will fight today, God is on your side. Hallelujah. There are things you will not get in this kingdom until you put up a fight. The Bible says in Luke chapter 16 verse 16. And nobody Nobody will do this fight for you. He said the kingdom of God was preached. He said the law and the prophet were until John. Since the time the kingdom of God is preached and every man pressed into it. <laughs> you, you pressed to get what belongs to you. 
mtu hujiingiza kwa nguvu you, you are too gentle to get what belongs to you pole sana kupewa cha kwako the devil you are fighting is not a gentle devil shetani unayepigana naye sio mpole he will put up a fight atapweka mapigano hallelujah hallelujah is somebody here with what i'm saying unanisikia anachosema i want that value of enough enough Nataka hilo tamko la tosha tosha. To walk in your life today. Alitende kazi maisha ni mwako leo. Wewe ugonjwa uliokuwa muda mrefu wa siku nyingi. Lazima uambie ya tosha. Lift up your voice. Inua sauti yako. And begin to pull that verdict. Anza kukomesha. That verdict of a love is enough. That verdict of a love enough. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. Hilo tamko la ya tosha tosha. Enough is enough. Sijui ni nini unachopitia. The way you pray it you are not fighting. Hivi unavyoopa. We fight on the other of prayer. Yesu kama unamaanisha. The Bible said the weapon of our warfare are not carnal. Sema vita vyetu sio vya kimwili. We are mighty to God in the power of the devil. Na kuangusha kuzozana. And casting down every imagination. Na kuziangusha kila. And everything that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing it into captivity to the obedience of God. You must declare a enough is enough. We will declare enough is enough. Lift up your voice and declare enough of stagnation. That's tormenting in your dream. Enough is enough. Every time you sleep, they are tormenting you. No, enough is enough. Is somebody ready to declare that word? Abrakabalaba. You have begged too much. Enough of begging. You are not for begging. Oh, break it too, shalabalabalaba. Without a lion heart, you will not get your lion share. You take it, take it, it belongs to you. Jesus paid the price, yes, not devil. It's permitted to afflict you. Declare enough is enough. To, today, sickness, tomorrow, sickness, no. It's not supposed to be like that. Jesus paid the price. Oh, halabababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababab
I decree a law of his enough. I decree a law of his enough. I decree a law of his enough. Somebody make that decree. I decree a law of his enough. A law of his enough. The devil take your hand off the business of those people. Take your hand off their career. Take your hand off the academies. A law of his enough. Is somebody making that decree tonight? In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody shout a louder amen. Put number three for me. You are going to declare, Father, I declare enough to every form of oppression over my life and family. Enough of oppression. Enough of every form of oppression. Lift up your voice and begin to decree. I decree enough of his enough to every form of satanic oppression. Anything oppressing you and the member of your family. It's coming to an end now. 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 Oh, Shakaba, Lakatoshi, Kalaba. Shuake teke toko toko toliaba. Shuande keto shiaka baliba. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. No more satanic oppression. By the liberation ocean, that oppression is over. Is somebody praying at all? Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' glorious name. Put number four for me. We are going to say, Father, I decree enough is enough to so every form of sickness and disease in my life and household. Enough is enough. When we are saying enough is enough, we say, let it come to an end. That's what it Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Every form of sickness and disease in my life, every form of sickness and disease in my family, enough is enough. 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 To every form of sickness and disease in my life and that of my household. Oh, I declare the enough is enough. 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 Enough Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' glorious name. I'm not hearing a louder amen. I'm not hearing a louder amen. We're going to pray again. You are going to say that put number six. I declare an end to all financial challenges. Poverty and one and one in my life. I declare an end. God say he will make an utter end. To all financial challenges. Poverty and lack in my life. Lift up your voice and pray. And the shukali katesho Shuala kuta Hakuna kukosa Hakuna tena umaskini Roya umaskini Vazi la umaskini Hangu leo Mbegu ya umaskini Hangu leo inaondoka Na kwa kondoka Tika jina la yesu Endelea kutamka kila umaskini Uitaji kupungukiwa Kukosa Atamka ya tosha tosha Kila namna umaskini Changamoto za kifuwa Uitaji kuomba omba Imekopa Imefika mwisho Kukopa Kuomba Kuitaji Imekopa
come to an end. Let it 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 come to an end. Oh, Yababa Kato Sheketo Laba. Shwande Keto Shia Kateli Yababa. Yoki Takaba. Leketon Beliaba. La Katelia is somebody making that declaration. Damka Sasa. Oh, break it to Shilabha. Thank you, Jesus. Sante so. In the name of Jesus Christ. And we're going to pray. Go to number eight for me. Banane. So, Father, we declare enough is enough to Babiness in the winner's family. Baba na tamka ya tosha tosha kwa kila utasa katika familia wa shi. Anyone in waiting, Lord, that wait is over today. Huko kungoja leo ndiyo mwishu. Anyone call Baben, that Babiness is over. Yeyote hazai katika familia hiyo wa shindi, leo ndiyo mwishu. In Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 14, he said, that we shall be blessed with children and none shall be Babin in the land. Hakuna takai kuwa tasa katika chiyako. Including our cattle. Lift up your voice and is somebody making that decree oh enough is enough so shall it be somebody shout a louder amen somebody shout a louder amen amen and let's pray finally put number one for me you are going to cry to God. Say, so God, I decree. Let no one ask me where is your God this year. In every area of my life. In marriage, family, health. Let no man ask me where is your God. Let them see you in me. Lift up your voice and pray, Lord. Don't allow anyone to ask me where is my God. Don't allow anyone to ask me where is my God. That mockery is coming to an end today. That mockery is coming to an end today. They have been laughing at you. It is over today. No one will ask you this year where is your God. No one will ask you this year where is your God. No one will ask you this year where is your God. Let no one ask me where is your God. Oh, they will see the hand of God upon you. Life. Then we know that you serve a living God. They have been mocking you say every day, church, 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 church. They will see the effect of it. Let no one ask any member here. We are his young God. Lord, visit them and turn their story around. Let no man ask us this year. We are his young God. That mockery must come to an end. That mockery must come to an end. That mockery must come to an end. Oh, halabakatoli aba. No one will ask me this year where is my God. They will see God. They will see God. They will see God in my life. They will see God in your business. They will see God in my ministry. They will see God in your family. They will see God in your health. Oh, they will testify that we have not seen it in this fashion. Let no one ask me where is my God. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody shout a louder amen. amen. If you believe God have heard you, shout a louder amen. amen. Remember, I normally tell you that the worst thing that can happen to you is to doubt your prayers. Anytime you pray, believe. If you believe God have heard you, shout a louder amen. You know, the, the prayer you are sure of is the one you pray for yourself. Many people that tell you I'm praying for you, they are not praying for you. Don't bank on somebody is praying for you. The person you say should pray for you, his own challenge is greater than your own. That's why the one you can boast of and bank on 
is the one you pray for yale unaweza kutegemea na kuweka imani yako ni yale unayoomba mwenyewe never doubt your prayers kama usitilie shaka maombi yako mwenyewe god gave you a matter and a wisdom mungu amekupatia kinywa na hekima and when you say it kwamba utakaposema the devil clear off shetani anaondoka and i know as you have declared na najua kama ulivyotamka so shall it be ndivyo itakavyokuwa in the name of jesus christ katika jina kula yesu and not here in a louder amen sisi amen one of the things that put an end moja vitu ambavyo vinakomesha to every issue of concern changamoto yote maishani is a life of thanksgiving ni maisha shukrani we have seen this commission tumeona huduma hii overcoming one challenge or the other ikishinda changamoto kadha wa kadha kupitia shukrani and this week have been set as the same week again we are we are going to we not the liberation onshon two thanksgiving na wiki hii ni wiki ambayo imewekwa imetengwa kwa ajili ya kumshukuru Mungu kwa maadhimisho ya huduma hii but somebody may ask why are we thanking god as a commission kwa nini mtu anaweza kauliza kwa nini tumshukuru Mungu kama huduma why are we thanking god for this commission kwa nini tunamshukuru Mungu kwa ajili ya huduma hii We have a lot of reasons why we are thanking God. Tuna sababu nyingi sana za kumshukuru Mungu. For 38 years. Kwa miaka 38 of grace. Ya neema. Of impact. Ya mguso. Of glory. Ya utukufu. This liberation onshon on Wednesday will be exactly exactly on Wednesday will be 38 years. Ili agizo la ukombozi ifikapo Jumatano itatimiza miaka 38. But for us to it just to can you see that? Tukae kidogo. God save and send us this thing to Tell the people what we are doing this week. Tumisho wa Mungu ametuambia tuwaambie watu yale tunayokwenda kufanya wiki hii. Thank God I didn't forget. Shukrani Mungu sikusahau. Because say, immediately after the word this is what you said to them. Amesema tuseme hili baada ya neno. Before I would do attack all and well. We praise God and share the grace. Kabla hatujamaliza ibada. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can preach for 30 minutes and close the service and with that prayer everybody go. Naweza kuhubiri dakika 30 na kila mtu akaondoka. Especially when over 60% members of the church are only seen on sunday za lakini inachokuwa ni ngumu kwamba washirika wengi wanakuja jumapili tu kanisani ndio maana kaa chini sikiliza neno na wengi mnaokuja jumapili tu basi angalau mje ibada mbili and i discovered you see when i started this sermon the congregation was not this number na nilipoanza ujumbe wengi wengi walikuwa hawajafika after we share the grace you have to share na fadhili mtu anaondoka you didn't hear anything haujasikia ujumbe wa kutosha when the summer was almost ending umefika ujumbe ni nusu and i will share the grace you go you say you have attended service tukishirikishana na wana fadhili na wao naondoka umesema mwanzo baada ya kwanza the same time another sunday alafu tena jumapili ijayo nakuja umechelewa vile vile the habit of coming late here is so much Tabia ya kuja kwa kuchelewa ni kubwa. Kama unajua ni ibada ya kwanza ndo unakuja kwani usiwahi kabla ya saa 1. Because sababu kazini kwako unakofanya kazi ni mbali kuliko hata kanisa lako lilipo. By 4:30 a.m. 5 a.m. you have gone. Saa 11 na asubuhi ushaondoka ushakwenda kazini. Kwani usifanye hivyo kanisani? By 7 o'clock many people are in the church they have never been part of praise and worship. Kuna watu wengine mwaka mzima kwenye ibada ya kwanza hawajawahi kushiriki sifa. Anachokuja yeye anafikia ujumbe. Anakuja ibada moja tu. Tangazo mambo yote yanayofanyika huko nyuma yeye hajawahi shiriki kwa mwaka mzima. This is not the kind of attitude we learn from our fathers. Hii namna ya tabia tunayojifunza toka kwa baba yetu. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. I say praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. When you come late and I know those are coming now coming for second service. Najua wanaoingia sasa hivi nakuja ibada ya pili. But we have seen most of them when they come like it and sit down and after we share the great for first service they go. Wengi wao wanakuja wanachelewa na baada tu kuisha ibada anaondoka na yeye anasema nifanye mashari ibada ya kwanza. You have come to service. Unasema umekuja ibada ya kwanza. You are not part of the prayers, you are not part of everything. Hujaomba maombi, hujaomba sifa, matangazo hujasikia. One important aspect of service is the praise and worship. Sema muhimu sana ya ibada ni sifa na kuabudu. But many people have not experienced it. Lakini watu wengi hawashiriki. Because of late coming. Kwa sababu ya kuja kwa kuchelewa. Let's change our approach badilishe namna tunavyofanya somebody shout hallelujah haza hallelujah i'm not hearing a bigger hallelujah yes sikia hallelujah i'm not hearing a bigger hallelujah sikia hallelujah and especially i'm telling you the truth to see most of us in the midweek is difficult 
Wengi wetu kuja katikati ya wiki ni ngumu. And it's not because of the, your work. Na sio kwa sababu ya kazi. It's not because of what, where you are living. Sio kwa sababu ya unakoishi. Because no matter where you are working in town, there is a center in a city center. Kwa sababu hata kama unafanya kazi mjini kuna kituo pale. Is far from you on Wednesday. Kama banana ni mbali kwako. City center where you are working is not far. Jumatano unaweza kwenda mjini kuna kituo pale. You close pale. work there and you go there. Unaweza kumaliza kazi yako mapema ukaenda pale mjini. And they hook on whatever we are doing here. That's no, what we are doing. Nao moja kwa moja kwenye hiki tunachokifanya. About it's all about your passion and love for the so, things of God. So, umbali au kazi au muda, swala ni the, moyo the, wako hauko kwa mungu. The lukewarmness I'm, I'm seeing here. Uo uvugu vugu na uona. Somebody is coming to this time and is walking as if he is the uncle of God. Mtu anakuja, amechelewa, anavuta migu. Alimumi kwamba amechelewa. Please, let's change. Tubadilike. This church is not a new church, it's an old church. And I must tell you the truth. Na lazima ni kwambie ukweli. The level we are we supposed to pass this level in everything. Kiwango tulipo tunatakiwa tuwe juu tuwe mbali kwenye kila kitu. will not go beyond our maturity. Lakini kanisa haliwezi kukua kutuzidi ukomavu wetu. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. I say praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. This church was planted many years ago and most of us are started with this church that I've been here for. Kanisa hili imepandwa miaka mingi iliyopita na wengi walikuwa hapo. Planted 2010 during winners everywhere. You see how mature the church is. Kuna makanisa ingine mepandwa juzi tuwe fmina kumi leo wamekua wame imarika kiroho. Let's go. Tukue. Let's mature. Tukomae. Let everybody take personal responsibility. Kila moje awajibike binasi. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I believe that many of you, it's only as you hear the word and read on the screen, many people doesn't open Bible two at the week. Na wengi wetu, ni pale tu wanapokuwekea andiko kwenye screen ndo unalisoma na tukikusomea hapa. Vinginevyo, wiki nzima hugusi biblia wala kuoma. You can't dominate this year with such character. Uwezi kutawala kwa tabia hiyo. Please, you need to change. Lazima ubadili. And if we don't tell you the truth in the church, I don't know what na tusipo kwambia ukweli kanisani siju utausikia wapi ukweli nimekuwa hapa zaidi ya mwaka sasa nimeona hali tabia na mienendo mnayofanya wakati wa ibada tukikufuata wewe unaweza ukashusha moto wa mchungaji unaweza kuzimisha moto wa mchungaji kama huyo mtu akikutazama na kufuata wewe tafadhali badilika the same way you are committed to your work, be committed to God. The same way you pursue money, pursue God, money will pursue you. We know winners are dedicated and committed people. We do operation prayer too, it does not concern you. Operation prayer too, it does not concern you. You just come on Sunday and you come very late after service have ended. Wee badako ni jumapili, umechelewa sana, hakika wema na fadili. You can't stay for second service and and begin from the from the praise and worship to the end. You can't stay. Umechelewa kuja badako kwanza, baki ibada ya pili, anza na sifa na kwa budu, sikiliza ujimbe wote. And there's nothing you are doing in the house that is very, very important. Na hakuna na chokifanya uko nyumbani cha muhimu. You can't enhance your destiny with such things. Uwezu kufanikiwa hatima yako kwa tabia hiyo. Everyone successful are God added. Kila aliefanikiwa ni walevi wa mungu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're a businessman, you are not, you are not more, more than uh, uh, John D. Rockefeller. The Kama, first American billionaire. Kama wani mfanya biyashara, uwezi kumzidi John Rockefeller. He was a poor businessman in millions of dollars. Alikuwa ni mfanya biyashara tajiri but sana. But he was, he was a church warden. Lakini wakati hote likuwa kani sana. The impact is still speaking after he had died. Na mguso waka hata bada ya kuwa mesha kufa. We have seen businessmen, we have seen if you want to see the glory that awaits you somebody shout hallelujah I'm not hearing a bigger hallelujah even though you are angry shout a bigger hallelujah what are, we, what are we doing this week? Why are we thanking God as a commission? Why? For making our light as a commission to keep shining. For 30 years we have seen the light shining and shining and shining. Number two, for continuous divine guidance. There are many ministries that started before us but they, 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 come, they are not near to us. Because we are guided. We are guided. We are guided. God never left us 
on a course road. Kamwa Mungu hajaitwa acha njapanda. What are we thanking God? Ni nini hasa tunachomshukuru Mungu kwa? For fulfillment of prophecies. Kwa ajili ya utimilifu wa nabii. 1982 a prophecy of building 50,000 auditorium walls. God said it to me the matter of the summer. Mwaka 82 toka unabii kwamba mtumishi wa Mungu atalijenga jengo lenye kukaa watu wa kwa msingi. Na Mungu akafanya. Even when the commission was not in God say I saw ever plan I saw him spreading the gospel with ever plan and God did it. huduma ilikuwa changa tumishi wa Mungu akasema nimeona tunaeneza injili kupitia anga kwa imani kwa maneno mengine ndege lakini Mungu amefanya for ever increasing on shown upon the apostles over this great commission zote Mungu anaendelea kumpaka mafuta mabichi mtume wa huduma hii the ocean have not dropped upako wake haujapungua it has been on increase umekuwa ukiongezeka tena na tena hallelujah there have never been a day we say okay let's pray today and pray for our apostle hatujai kusema leo tuombe mtumishi wa Mungu Mungu amponye Mungu ameendelea kumpanga working a minimum of 18 hours every day anafanya kazi zaidi ya masaa 18 kila siku bado ana afya njema this is the doing of the lord hai ni matendo ya bwana and it is marvelous in that somebody say thank you jesus sema asante yesu for 38 years of grace and glory miaka 38 ya utukufu na neema will be doing this week. Tomorrow is going to be a praise celebration night. Kesho itakuwa ni jioni ya sifa. 5 p.m. Tuesday 5 p.m. Jumane 11. Wednesday 5 p.m. Jumatano 11. Thursday 5 p.m. Alhamis 11. And Friday is going to be a liberation night which will be a full blown Hosanna night. Ijuma itakuwa ni mkesha mbao usiku mzima itakuwa ni Hosanna sifa za Hosanna 2. Somebody shout hallelujah. Haz hallelujah. And in our celebration we are beginning tomorrow in all our churches worldwide. Na katika shereze tunazoanza kesho duniani kote kila mahali. There are slot for ministrations kutakuwa na huduma mbalimbali for everyone every member who want to minister in some choreography and some presentations including next Sunday next Sunday that is the 38 Thanksgiving anniversary service hallelujah let everyone be part of it stand up on your feet and give him all the glory. Give him all the honor. Somebody give him all the praise. Do you believe the prayers you have prayed today? Give him all the glory. In Jesus' glorious name. John chapter 9 verse 31. Before I pray for you and pray again. John chapter 9 verse 31. And before I go to that. Before you share let me. The Bible says we know that God heareth not sinners. Please, you have prayed now. If you are a sinner, if you are not born again, your prayer is hanging. And by surrendering your life to Jesus, it will ascend to And do your bit. That's why somebody is here who wants to say, Pastor, pray for me. Enough is enough cannot work when you are still in the kingdom of darkness. Remember where I read. I, I, I read that scripture last night. I said, God is going to do something in life for someone. Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 37. I want to point out something for you. Because until you have redeemed, you will remain 50 verse 33 and 34. Until he said, say the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel and children of Judah were oppressed together. And the devil is oppressed, and all of them, they took them captive, held them fast, and they refused to let them go. But they are redeemed. Are you redeemed? If you are not redeemed, you don't have a redeemer. That's why he said the redeemer is strong. The Lord of hosts is his name. Do you know this God of hosts? That can bring you out from that captivity. You can know him now. Unaweza kumjua sasa. By surrendering to Jesus. Kwa kumpa Yesu maisha yako. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All has bowed. Tu ina mishe vichwa. You want to surrender to Jesus? Unataka kuokoka? Or you want to rededicate your life? Au uliokoka kwa rudi nyuma ndaka kutengeneza? Put your hand on your chest. Let me pray for you. Weka mkono wako kifuana ataka ni kuombe. Put your hand on your chest. Let me pray for you. Wewe ambaye hauja okoka. Unataka kuokoka. Weka mkono wako kukulia kifuana. Wherever you have put it very well. Uliokoka uko nyuma. Uka rudi nyuma. Uka anguka. Weka pia mkono wako wakulia kifuana. Can you come? Let me pray for you. Jombele ni kuombe. 
Come here. Don't fuss, we don't have time. Come, 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 come. come. Wherever you are, take that step of faith and come. Somebody is coming, somebody is coming. Somebody is coming, God bless you, sister. God bless you. That board I saw you putting your hand. Please come, there's no shame for you. Immediately I say, come forward, you remove your hand. No, don't do like that. It is for your own good. Come, come. come. God is fighting for you today. You have already started and his family is fighting for you. Come, come, come. Come, come, come. come something is something is happening in your life. Come, wherever you are, come. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus, come. You want to say, Jesus, I am missing. you. I want to come. Come, come, come. come. I come, I come. Your life will never be mended. Jesus, Thank you for this words. If you are still there, please, you have come here. Come and join these sisters and the brothers here. Come and we really dedicate your life to Jesus. Congregation, can you be seated in the moment? While you are seated, package your thanksgiving offering. We are going to give it now. Let's leave this one to Jesus. Their life will never be made. Thank you, Jesus. Help me pray that prayer with them. Lord, we thank you for this morning. Nitakase futa jina langu kwenye kitabu cha hukumu andika jina langu kwenye kitabu cha uzima asante yesu kwa kuniokoa asante yesu kwa kukomesha kila mateso ya shetani maisha ni mwangu amen chungaja takombe father thank you baba asante for saving these souls today. I cover them with the blood of Jesus Christ. I put an end to every spirit of addition. And let the grace, Lord, have saved them Anything that is not of you, it is over in their life today. Any demonic forces living in any of their bodies, today, I cast you out of their bodies. I cover them with the blood of Jesus Christ. They remain covered. In the name of Jesus Christ. Christ. Lord, every long issue of concern, let it come to an end today. They correct their lives in Jesus' name. You are blessed. Please follow our church officials. And they will minister to you. Hallelujah. We have the invitation we serve as an invitation for what we are doing this week ushers will put it in the hand of everyone and they are going to be as an invitation be joyful and invite people that we are celebrating 38 years and let them join us in this celebration. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody rise up if you have your thanksgiving offering. They will collect, we are going to collect it now and share the grace. While you are singing now, everybody rise up as we celebrate. Now. And those that collected offering will collect it. Please go sing now, let's praise God. Kwaya